So I'm like, man, Ben looks like, man, if he would say, yeah, I'm like, it would just be great to talk to him based on what, what I've seen and what your business is doing. That is one of the added benefits of podcasting. You just get to talk to people who you might not ever get to talk to. This is Recorded Content, a podcast for small, scrappy B2B marketing teams who want to get the most out of podcasting. In each episode, we'll explore how podcasting can drive your company's content strategy, build brand awareness, and help you connect with your ideal customers. Let's get to it. Hey, this is Ben. I'm the Managing Director of Podcasting at Motion and your host for this episode of Recorded Content. Recorded Content is brought to you by Motion, a done-for-you podcast agency for small, scrappy B2B tech marketers. Recently, I joined Eric Rutherford on his show, Build That Podcast, and had a great conversation that I wanted to share here on Recorded Content. We talked about some of the biggest challenges that businesses face when starting a podcast, uh, the importance of finding your unique angle to attract listeners, and the benefits of podcasting for your business, among other topics. Let's jump in. It is time for Build That Podcast, where we'll discuss how you can use a podcast to grow your business and expand your influence. I'm your host, Eric Rutherford, and I am thrilled today because I have with me Ben Dukowski. He is the Managing Director of Podcasting at Motion, where they help B2B marketers launch their podcasts and repurpose each episode into high-quality audio, video, and written assets. Ben, welcome to the show. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate it. I'm honored to, uh, to be on. Well, man, I am thrilled that you are, you accepted the offer and you have just enjoyed following your content on LinkedIn and what you guys are doing at Motion. So yeah, just thrilled to, to jump in. Now, just kind of as we get into the show, I noticed you were a sports editor back in the day. Like, and, and I'm always curious how some of the early experiences kind of shape what we do today and how it, it sort of connects. So I'd love to hear, how do you, how did sports editing connect you to what you're doing today? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's a good question because it's, it kind of comes full circle. So I, when I went to college, I went to Old Dominion University and I actually went there with Justin Brown, who is one of the, the co-founders at Motion. He was a year or two ahead of me, but uh, I met him through working at the student newspaper. And the reason I got into that was just because, yeah, you know, I think like everybody, yeah, you start to realize, hey, I'm, you know, I'm in college. I got a few years left before I really got to get my life together. Um, and that for me was kind of combining two things that I really enjoyed, which was sports. And I also enjoyed, you know, writing. And so I, I, I got into sports editing and I just, I covered everything. I mean, I covered football, basketball, field hockey, swimming, rowing, sailing. We had a big sailing team. So what I learned there was that I, I, I enjoyed not just the writing really, and not just the sport, but the, the stories that came with it, right? You know, every, every athlete, every team, every coach, you know, has a, a different perspective on, you know, the season and the kind of their own journey. And I fell in love with kind of the, uh, the story aspect of it as well. So I really wanted to become a journalist after, after school. So naturally I went into sales um, and I worked in, in tech sales. I had to, didn't really know what, what to do, you know, when I was coming out of school, I, I wrote for a little bit for an online publication, but it wasn't really, you know, it wasn't going to pay the bills. It wasn't going to cover the student loans and rent. I just decided, Hey, you know, I got to figure out what it is I'm going to do. So I, Justin was actually working at a tech company or at least a, it was like an outsourced lead gen company. And the way that he kind of explained sales to me was that, you know, it was very similar in what we were doing for the paper in interviewing people, but it wasn't an interview. Instead, it was just trying to figure out, you know, what's going on in their environment, that sort of thing. And then trying to figure out, hey, can, you know, is there a fit here or is there not? So that's kind of what led me is the same kind of like theme, you know, or the same interest that led me into sales. I did that for eight, nine years, you know, at different companies. Uh, I worked at Dell, I worked at Seagate, some smaller companies as well. But I, I also worked with Motion right before Dell for about a year or two. And that was when we were primarily a video production company. And yeah, I came on, that was right when we started, loved it. I ended up leaving the company as they were basically, you know, kind of redoing their, their business model to transition more toward podcasting. The reason I left was just because I had my own like personal life things going on. I, I was living in Richmond at the time. My longtime girlfriend had moved down to 
she wanted to move to Nashville. She had been waiting around in the, the Northern Virginia, Richmond area for, for me over the past, you know, five years or so, I think. And I just decided, hey, you know, it's, it's really, you know, it's, it's her turn to, to be able to do what she wants as well. But Nashville, obviously, is a, is a fun place when you're a young person. So I went there. And then as they, you know, they really started getting their legs under them with the podcasting side of things over the years, Justin and I always kept in touch. And, you know, they, they kind of grew to a point where, you know, Justin really wanted to find, Motion wanted to find, you know, somebody to bring on to, you know, really run the podcasting show for them. When he reached out to me, it was just, it was a dream come true. I mean, I, I always wanted to be able to come back. It just, it had to make sense in, you know, my life as well as, you know, for the company. And uh, I, I came back and the reason I did was because I do get to combine kind of, you know, the skill set and that interest that I got all the way back from, you know, being a sports editor and then also pair it with everything that I learned from sales, you know, my sales career in terms of, you know, discovery questions, that sort of thing, and really kind of pull it all together and do something that I love, which is, is, you know, podcasting now. And I, I don't want to brag too much, but I think that I, I'm up there in terms of the, the most hours listened for podcasts, probably in the whole world. I, I love I'm, it. Yeah, I, I'm literally always, it kind of gets me into trouble. Uh, it gets me into some hot waters because, you know, I'm, I'm sitting there, whether I'm at work, you know, writing emails, that sort of thing. I've got headphones on, listening, walking the dog, doing laundry. And there are plenty of times where, you know, I'm sitting down, my girlfriend's talking to me. I have no idea because I'm listening to something. So it's a roundabout way to answer the question. But, you know, the, the sports editor role kind of set the foundation. And I think like, you know, a lot of people, I didn't really know what it was that I wanted to do or be when I, when I grew up, right. When I got older and it really just kind of paved the way for me to actually do, you know, the thing that I love when it came along. And so I think part of it is I I'm, I'm lucky for the opportunity, but the other part of it is I'd all start, you know, back in my sports editing days. I love that description of, of both from, from sports editing and sales and just this idea of podcasting in general and how it, it brought you here because it seems like it does have that connection. You, you investigate, you ask questions, you do this whole interview process. And so I can see, man, yeah, it seems like a natural fit with what you're doing at Motion then. Yeah, yeah, no, it's been exciting. I mean, there's, it's, I'm still learning and just as anybody, you know, you're always learning, but it's, it's something that for, you know, for the first time, I really understand, you know, the saying, oh, if you, you know, if you love your work, you ever work a day in your life. Granted, it's still work, but I do love the work. You know, it's, it's podcasting is fun. You know, I mean, that's, that's why we're here today. Right. Um, it is, it's, it's enjoyable, but it's, it's one of the things that, you know, I just, I didn't really ever see myself, you know, being able to find something like this that I really fit into that I could get this much, you know, personal enjoyment out of while also still you know, paying the bills with it, which is just a really cool feeling. Yeah, that's a that's something else. It's like you can do cool stuff, but you can't always pay the bills with. It. Yeah, and I, I, that dream almost died with me when I realized I wasn't going to be a pro athlete, uh, and that happened early on. So it was a nice. It's been a nice. It's been a nice surprise being back with Motion. Oh, I love it. So let's just jump into Motion. What? Tell me about Motion. What do you guys do? And yeah, let's just go there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, we're a podcasting agency for B2B. Usually we typically work with like B2B tech companies, right? So we work with marketing teams usually to help, you know, stand up and launch their own podcasts. So it can be for, you know, a variety variety of different reasons that they they want to have a podcast, but usually it's, you know, to build a closer relationship with their audience, which is generally their their customers or prospective customers, you know, in a less invasive way, um, which is a really powerful thing that podcasting can do because it's something where you're, it's almost like you're, you're bringing the listener, or the audience is bringing you into their, their home, right? Where typically in the past you would have to go, you know, go knocking on doors, you know, and, and ask to be invited in, but now they're inviting you in, in the form of a podcast. And it's not so much as you're selling them directly, but indirectly, you almost are, right? Because these people get to know who you are, kind of what you do. They get to trust you. And, you know, they're, they're tuning in because they feel like there's some sort of value that they're getting out of, you know, your show. And our goal is, is to really help, you know, those companies figure out, you know, hey, how do we do this, right? How do we stand up a show? 
but also make it possible in terms of like uh, just the, the resources needed to do it. Right. So there's a lot of, a lot of companies right now, especially with the, you know, the state of the economy companies are, are trying to you know, trim down as much as they can, or at least be as, as efficient as possible where they can. So we work with, you know, marketing teams who are seeing, you know, more and more of the importance to do more with less. So we, we try to take that work off their hands, if that makes sense. So really helping them to, you know, launch the show, but then also we do all like the, like the editing, we you know do all the post-production and return it to them. So really it's just, all they have to do is just, you know, record the actual show itself, give that to us. And then we, you know, return all the assets to them uh, in a variety of different ways. Our big thing is just being able to break down the podcast episode and, you know, redistribute it. You know, there's a, there's a lot of content inside of a, a podcast, a lot of things you can do with it. So if you're just doing a, you know, full video file or a full audio file, you're kind of missing out on some of the other value that it can bring through, you know, those, you know, short video clips, you know, transcripts, uh, the show notes we talked about before we jumped on, but there's just a lot that you can do with it. And we're trying to not only help them watch it, but make the most of their show. Wow. No, I love that. Now, as you are, as you're talking with these companies, what is it really the time factor that you're solving for where they're like, hey, I just don't have time to do this? Or is it more of the, I just don't have the, the knowledge base? Is it both? What, what do you see the big problem is there for them that, that you guys are taking care of? Yeah, yeah. And I think it is a little bit of both because it does take time, right? And it's, it's not just, there's a, there's a lot more legwork on the front end. And then once, ideally, once you get things up and running, all you need to worry about is is kind of the recording piece. But people, I think, don't realize until they start doing it that that is, I mean, it is a time commitment. It's an ongoing one. You know, you got to not only figure out what it is that you're going to talk about, but if you're going to get a guest on the show, you need to figure out who that's going to be, get in touch with them, schedule it, and then go ahead and, you know, actually do the recording. And so it's it's not a ton of work. It doesn't take a ton of time to, to do that when you think about it in terms of like, hey, how long does it take to do this during the day? But when you're doing it consistently, it's something that you, another thing you have to keep up with that does take you away from other things. So that's part of it. Part of it is the time. And then you mentioned, you know, just not, not knowing how to do it, right? I mean, a lot of, a lot of the people that we work with, you know, they're, they're smart people, but they've never done a podcast before. So just saying, hey, you know, I want to do a podcast and you sit down and you're like, where do I start though? So it's a little bit of a combination of both. And then a lot of the questions, we also get a lot of questions around like, Hey, you know, what do we need to have to like set up a studio? For example, what equipment do we need? And we see a lot of companies who think that, you know, we have to spend you know, 10, 15, 20 K on, you know, this nice big studio, which if you want to, that's great. And if, if you can, awesome, but it doesn't have to be that heavy of a financial lift, you know, um, really with, you know, a, a camera, you know, a microphone that we both have, and then some, some headphones. I mean, that can really at least get you started. And that's the biggest thing is just, just getting started. People can't listen if you don't put things out. So just being able to at least get the, the ball rolling is a big part of it. But I would say those are the two main reasons why people come to us is because they just don't have the time. They don't have the bandwidth. And then they, they just don't know because they haven't had the previous experience with podcasting to, you know, not know how to set it up. That makes sense. Now, are you working with, are you working with large companies? Are you looking, working with like startups? Like, do you just work with everybody? I didn't know. Is there a certain size customer you guys work with primarily? Yeah. So primarily we, it's like, I would say small to medium sized companies. I mean, we work with startups. We work with medium-sized companies. We all, sometimes we work with larger companies as well. But I would say, like our really our sweet spot is is kind of that that you know SMB where it's that small you know small scrappy marketing teams, right? Ones that are you know they have a lot thrown on their plate. And a lot of times it's like, especially with the startup, it's you've got everything. You've got to do everything. You got to start from scratch generally. And you have a ton of things that going on and you're trying to figure out, hey, well, what's the best way that we can, you know, get content out there? Well, podcasting is a great way to do it. But, you know, if you're in a startup, you probably don't have the resources or the time, you know, to actually dedicate towards getting a podcast set up. So 
I would say, you know, for the a majority of the people that we we work with are going to be that small to medium sized uh, companies, and usually in that that B two B tech space as well. Okay. Now, do you find that you are doing almost more educating as you go in terms of hey, you know, not you can use this podcast and you can use it as you talked about earlier in all of these ways. Is it like, Hey, here is how a podcast can help you. Here's how long it takes. Is there that education element too? Yeah. Yeah. There certainly is. And and we work with people who, a few who have done it in the past too. So I don't want to necessarily say as a blanket statement that, you know, we're, we're like, it's not like they, it's not like I, I tell them everything they know, but yeah, I mean, there's, I think, Everybody has to kind of learn their own way and you have to sort of have the experiences for some things to really sink in. But that is a big part of it, especially as we're in the like the pre-launch stage, because that's that's when a lot of questions come up that people don't realize they they had before going through some of it with us. Right. Like when you think about. You know, what equipment do we need? It's like, yeah, it's so we're thinking about the equipment that but also like. Have you thought about lighting? Where are you going to set up? Do you have a window? That sort of thing. And then, you know, what happens once you have the equipment, you have it all set up? What are you, re- what are we recording on? You know, have you thought that through? And then also it's, it's funny because you get all excited to, you know, to start podcasting, but then when it's time to hit record, there's also that aspect of, okay, what am I actually going to talk about though? And why? And that's, that's a, that is a big piece of it. I mean, of course, I, you know, I'm sure you get this too, but I've, you know, got friends and family who always talk to me, oh, I want to start a podcast. It's like, great, you should. But like, what are you, what is it going to be about? What are you going to talk about? Like, it can't just be, you know, Ben's, you know, podcast diary. I mean, it could be, but who's going to want to listen to it, you know? So you got to find kind of your angle with that as well. And I think that a lot of times, when people are starting out, like they have, they, they generally have good ideas. It's just, they need help kind of sharpening it or refining it a little bit to be able to accomplish what they want to. So there is some education, but I mean, we've been lucky. The people that we work with are, you know, they're great. They pick things up quickly. And it's always fun because every once in a while, somebody will ask a, a question. It's like, ah, I got that one before. So it helps us, you know, also continuously work to improve ourselves. Because there's constantly going to be things that come up, you know, the future as the industry changes and as people's needs changes, you know, that we're going to find out about and have to, to kind of figure out on our own as well. No, and I love that. And just kind of talking with some of that, that strategy, do you guys help find guests for businesses or do you just say, hey, you, you schedule it and we'll, you know, we can talk strategy, we can handle, you know, the, the post-production, but you need to schedule your own or do you guys handle that too? Yeah. Yeah. So we've talked about it. We, we don't do it as of right now, but it's something that we've been kicking around. So there might be more to come on that in terms of like re- doing actual guest scheduling for our, our clients. But I mean, we, what we do right now is, you know, we, we jump on like a kickoff call essentially. And yeah, you know, we talk through who their, their guests are going to be, right. Their guest profile, what types of people are they going to reach out to? What's their, you know, their relation to their audience and what are they going to be able to provide to the audience? And then, you know, we give advice on how we reach out to guests and how we get guests scheduled and that sort of thing. Uh, but we don't actually do the actual act of, of reaching out and booking people for them as of right now. But I mean, it's, it's something we've kicked around. We're still working on kind of refining how that would look, but that's a great question. You're, uh, you're, you're one step ahead of, of us right now. I'm just, I'm just talking about, you know, the two years down the road roadmap, right? That's yeah. what, because I know it is, I mean, that part of it is time consuming as well. Yeah, so, absolutely. And, and can be a, a challenge, but, but it sounds like you talk through that with them, what, what they can do and how to position that. Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess, let me, let me ask you, so how do you, how do you typically go about doing it then? So in terms of like, you reach out to me, right. And I, like, again, I'm honored, to pay, but I was curious, you know, what is it that, how, how is it that you determine, Hey, who, who am I going to reach out to? Why? And what's your process? Yeah, no, it's a great question. You know, part of it is, and, and I'm still, you know, I think this is going to be like the 27th episode of this particular podcast. I've, I've done others. So, and, and as you know, and and so if if you're listening and you don't realize this, just kind of relax, it's all good, but it usually takes a while to find your stride and, and like, 
like 27 episodes in, that doesn't mean you know exactly the flow uh, of what it is. But, you know, right now looking at, at how do we help businesses even get a vision for a podcast mm -hmm. for like what what motion is doing. And it's because, you know, some of them are like, yeah, I know exactly what that is. Some of them are like, how can how can I get sales from a podcast? Right. Right. You know, or, you know, it's not TikTok. Right. It's not the <laughs> yeah. new thing. Right. And yep. so it, it's all over the board. So, you know, so some of it is trying to find what would a a listener find interesting from a how can I connect a podcast and repurposing and strategy to a business? And so especially with, with what you guys are doing with both the strategy and the post-production repurposing, like you do, you do it all. And yeah. so that was something with the company I saw. And then with your content, it was one of those like, wow, he's he's really speaking into this into this gap that I, that I see out there. And, and in terms of, yeah, just me reaching out, it's more like, okay. One of the realities of, of podcasting is, as you know, as listeners may or may not know is you got to fill the queue. And so. <laughs> Abs absolutely. Always working on it. Always working on filling the queue. Absolutely. So I'm like, man, Ben looks like, man, if he would say, yeah, he would be a great not only, and selfishly, I'm like, it would just be great to talk to him based on what, what I've seen and what your business is doing. And, and so there's that, that is one of the added benefits of podcasting. You just get to talk to people who you might not ever get to talk to. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, and it's funny. And, and one of the things that I thought it was, it's that it, it really illustrates is that you find guests all over the place, right? Like where, where those guests are going to come from can be anywhere but i mean social media and keep it up on social media like linkedin so i'm not a very i'm not a huge social media person like tiktok for example i don't have it i don't have like i i have a facebook that i've logged into about seven years don't have it like instagram all that stuff i it's just never been my cup of tea but like you and i like we both get on linkedin you know and i think that's kind of how like obviously you know we came across each other's radar but you know i think that's a really interesting just thing to keep in mind as you're you're going throughout your day because you know, you're sitting down and trying to figure out, hey, okay, if I'm if you're starting a part podcast, okay, who are my my guests going to be? And then you know you get through kind of your own Rolodex, right? And then it's like, okay, now what? You know, well, you probably know a bunch of people that you could reach out to that would be great, you know, to ask to come on the show. Uh, and a lot of people would love to. It's exciting. It's exciting to be on a podcast. I mean, that's why I'm I'm here today, right? And uh, it's just one of those things where it's, you know. It doesn't have to be this almost like for me, it's, it's, I always tie it back to sales, obviously, because that, that's what I had done before, but it doesn't have to be this kind of like hunting situation where it's like, Hey, I gotta, I gotta, you know, reach out to, I gotta build a list and reach out to all these people that I, you know, that I want to get on the show just so I can get that queue built up. It can be as easy as, as you're going through LinkedIn and, you know, you see a post or a comment that you really like from somebody and, you know, you say, Hey, you know, why don't you come on the show? And like, I really like that comment. Why don't you come on the show and let's talk about it? Let's unpack that a little bit more. And I think those are some of the best conversations that that you'll end up having. So I uh, that's why I was asking that. I was just I was yeah. I, I think I think the uh, the way that some of the the best podcasters do it, or at least some of the conversations they have, the reason that they're so fluid or you know laid back, it's almost like two people sitting sitting and hanging out in a room, and the listeners there with you. I think a lot of it is because you know who they pay. It's people that they've either interacted with before. They truly, to your point, can make that connection as to why it makes sense. It's it's simple. It's not, you know, hey, I'm sitting here building a list trying to find these people. And I think you still do both. But at the same time, it's just just something I wanted to bring up. That's all. No, and I appreciate that. And that, you know, that raises a good question because it's like, where do you find people? And, and the LinkedIn is, I've found to be very effective. And so part of what I'll do is is I'm searching and scrolling and, you know, I comment and then people comment, you sort of build that network and then suddenly it's like, okay, I'm, this could be a fit. And you just have a few more, few more comments back and forth and you're like, okay, yeah, we could do this. And then, then it's not a cold email. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's all part of, it's, it's part of the building the queue, right? So it's, it's one of those things you don't even realize you're doing it most of the time. And I'm sure, you know, most of the people who are out there podcasting or want to podcast and think about, Hey, how do I find guests? It's like, you're probably already doing some of the, the groundwork on that and don't even realize it. Yeah. 
No, I love that. And the more I talk to people, the more it's it's like, wow, you the opportunities are are pretty enormous in terms of who you can who you can talk to, even from like, you know, hey, are you talking to existing customers? Are you talking to potential customers? And not even about, you know, not about your business, but about their business. Yeah. Do you do you see like light bulbs go off on some of these companies as they're building this podcast? Like, oh my word, I can talk to I can talk to to this group that I would love to, but they won't let me in the door or, you know, I would love to hear some, some of your thoughts on that. Yeah. And that's, I think that's the, the most powerful part of it for, for some of these companies where they're not, the people they can already reach out to, the people that they're already getting in touch with, that's not really where they're going to see the return. Right. I mean, you'll still get some, like, you're always breaking into more people no matter what, but like the, where that untapped market is, or the, you know, the big value is, you know, the, the people who are more difficult to kind of, you know, get a hold of. And I had read something, I can't remember where it is or what it was from. And it's right on the tip of my head, but I, I was reading something a couple, a couple of weeks ago saying basically that like C-level executives, you know, I think it was something like 35% of them say that they use like podcasting as, their number one medium for like buying decisions, basically, meaning that, you know, the, the reasons that they pick the vendors they pick is because they listened to a podcast and either, you know, run by that vendor or, you know, sponsored by them. And it was something that they were able to then, you know, feel comfortable with using or at least look into, right? And then go after it. And I think that's a perfect example where it's those C level executives, VPs, you know, they are tough to get in front of, especially from a sales perspective. They're busy, you know, just like everybody is, but you know, they're busy. They have a, a lot of responsibilities, a lot on them. So you know, the last thing that they probably are worried about or want to reply to is, you know, a sales call or sales email or, you know, talking to somebody that they really probably either never heard of or hadn't really necessarily displayed any interest outwardly, even though they may have an interest in something. So I think that that's the, that's the cool part of it is, you know, really helping people understand, Hey, what is the show going to be about? How are you going to, you know, bring value to your audience? But, you know, with that in mind, like, have you decided who your audience is going to be? Because to your point that that changes how you structure the show, right? If it's going to be to, you know, your, your clients or your customers, you know, it could just be something where it's more along, more along the lines of kind of what's going on within, you know, the industry and the company and maybe product updates, that sort of thing. But if you're looking at like perspective, you know, client or prospective customers, that's a totally different story, right? I mean, some of that might overlap, but at the same time, you want to be able to position yourself more so as that trusted advisor, instead of talking more about like yourself and the company that will come out throughout the podcast and people will start to know more and more. But if, I mean, if you're just talking about yourself constantly to somebody who you're trying to convince to buy from you, all it's got to do is just, you know, raise those guards, guards and shields and people are going to kind of shut down or just not listen. But if it's somebody who, you know, you don't work with yet, is dealing with all these issues that you're covering, you know, on your show, they're going to start to think, Hey, you know, Eric is like, he's talking about everything that, you know, keep, keeps me up at night. Right. And if he's doing that, like, he sounds like I should be able to trust that guy. I'm going to call that guy and see what he thinks I should do. So I think that that's, I think it's, it's interesting because it's something that like, you don't necessarily think about from a listener perspective, because I think a lot of people listen to podcasts, but they don't realize the value that it has from the other side. Do you see those businesses sort of have an aha moment? Like after they've had a conversation with you and like they're, they get things started Like they're sort of on board, but then it's like they get it. Is there like this aha moment they have? Yeah, I think I think what it is is when they come to you with an idea for the show, and the show is like yeah, that idea is I don't want to say half baked, but it's really having the conversation with us kind of helps connect that last piece where it's like, okay, so who's the show for though? Like when you take this idea, how are you going to position it, and like how do you help people differently? And when you say, when we talk about who it is they want to reach, then it's really, it's, they understand that it's not just, Hey, what is the show going to like, what can I, what do I want the show to be about? It's more about who do I want to reach? And I can kind of unlock that by crafting or developing the show 
around it, if that makes sense. So less of like, hey, Ben wants to have like, if I wanted to have a podcast, you know, it, it can't just be Ben's podcast talking about sports, right? It can't be Ben's podcast talking about, you know, Washington sports. It's who's going to listen to that? It, what's my goal though? My goal is to, you know, reach out to people and, you know, help them understand or help them learn how to kind of go through their podcasting journey. The best way to do that is not just have a podcast about, you know, just to have one talking about what Ben wants to talk about. The best way to do that is to have a podcast talking about podcasting, right? Hey, this is the stuff that we run into. This is stuff that we see. This is what we're working on. And this is like what's, you know, what's important to us or at least our clients. And this is how we solved it, right? These are the issues we ran into. And this was kind of the breaking point or like why we, you know, felt that we needed to make a shift or a change. And I think that that's kind of the aha moment that some of these companies see is it's not just about having a podcast. It's about understanding who it is that you want to reach and then making sure that you kind of connect the dots between the two. So if you want to reach like a C-level executive, well, then what do you think it is that will speak to them the most from in terms of what your company does or what your company can solve? And then how do we message that to them? You know, what's going to be compelling from their point of view, because it's not about, you know, you as the host, it's about the listener. It is. And that's a, that's a, it's a fascinating sort of mind shift when people get that. It's like, wow, okay. It's not about my business. It's not about what we do. It's, we're just going to have some conversations and we are, we're building that trust factor. Like you, you, you talked about earlier. Now, how long as, as you talk with businesses, because it's not an immediate, like things just don't go viral with right. podcasts right? or l- usually they don't go viral. It's more of that, that long growth process. How do you help them get their mind around that? Because I'm sure as you're talking to startup founders and startup executives are like, I need, like, I need like results next yep. week. And how do you help them walk through that? Yeah. Yeah. And I think part of that is, is taking care of in early conversations, which is setting expectations, right? Because if it's somebody who needs to to have something that's going to turn around results, you know, ASAP or more, I don't know. If, if you want to do something like that, where it's like, hey, I need results by like next week. I need, I need leads coming in by next week. Well, then it might not make sense for you to start a podcast right now. Then it sounds like you need to focus more on like direct sales, to be honest. And I think that sometimes, I mean, sometimes people, you know, come to us with, with that sort of thing where they want to have a more aggressive or they want to have more aggressive results in terms of the, the timeline. But the biggest things that we get in terms of like the, the growth is more along the lines of, hey, you know, what's good look like? Because it's, it's hard to know. I mean, if you go on, I don't know, like these viral videos that we talked about TikTok, I mean, I'm sure those have thousands, you know, hundreds or thousands. And then... They don't know what to expect. I mean, that's all they see in terms of like their YouTube videos, TikToks, whatever it is. They see all these likes on there and they assume that, hey, if they got all those likes, then that means that like they have like a thousand people like, you know, listening or watching or whatever they're following. And that's not necessarily the, the case. They don't really know what to expect to in terms of, I guess, followership or, you know, listenership to know whether they're doing well or not. And my biggest thing with that is like, all right, so we're starting at zero, right? So Let's, let's get it above zero first and let's just get rolling again. It goes back to just making sure that you're, you're, you have to put out content and you do want it to be quality content, but at the same time, my grandmother is an artist and she would always say, Hey, you know, it's an artist will continue to work on something for forever if you don't stop them or set a deadline. And that's true because I, I think, and it's, it almost applies to podcasting because people do care about it. They do care about their show and you have to be able to know or understand that you will improve over time. So, you know, get it to a place where you at least feel comfortable with it and then, you know, allow yourself to grow with it. And as you grow with it and you promote it, your show will grow over time as well. Now, you know, there's, there's cer- certain podcasts, depending on the, the actual audience that they're going for, you know, it's not necessarily fair to compare to like apples to apples. Like if you are somebody who is in, I don't know. I mean, if you're, Let's say like if you are a podcast that wants to talk about like I don't know, finance, right? Uh, as opposed to somebody or a podcast that talks about dentistry. 
chances are like there are a lot more people who will probably search for finance or finance podcasts than somebody who will search for dentistry. It doesn't mean that the dentistry one doesn't do well. It doesn't mean that it's not it, going to accomplish what they want. But at the same time, like you have to be able to un- like establish realistic goals and then kind of align them to, I guess, how you're positioning your podcast. And what I mean by that is as far as like a theme design topics of the show, but then also like, what are you doing with it afterwards? Right? So once you get that back, how are you promoting it? Are you promoting it on social media? Are you promoting it on your website? Are you using paid ads? Are you, you know, putting it on YouTube? What platforms is it on? And then also looking at that feedback, listener feedback is a, is a big part of it. Seeing what people think about your show and, and taking that, you know, I, don't say, I guess criticism and kind of running with it. But the biggest thing for, for us is just, let's get it out there. You know, we can track the numbers as we go. Let's not think too much of it, about it, you know, early on up front, because again, we, we're not going, we don't have anything to go off of yet. You will catch traction and sometimes it takes a little bit of time. Sometimes it happens fast. But once you do these episodes that you're starting with right now, it doesn't mean that if you get, you know, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 listens, it doesn't mean that it was a waste. It just means that as you continue to progress, one day as you go on, you're going to finally be to a point where you're like, man, I'm getting like a huge audience now. And that audience, the beauty about podcasting can also now go back and listen to previous episodes. I do that all the time. When I find a podcast that a new podcast I like, I get excited about it. And I listen to, to you know, that first one and I'm like, oh, dude, I want more. Well, it's great because you, you have more. So it's, it's a combination of setting expectations up front and just understanding on both ends kind of what you know, the client is expecting from their podcast as well as kind of what it is that, you know, we can deliver or what we can, you know, promise on our end. So it's, it's, it's interesting, but there's a number of things you can do to, to try to increase, you know, or at least help your sales team out and generate leads. But there is, you know, an aspect of, of time to that. Now, and I appreciate you bringing those things up because I think I think the longevity of podcasts is fascinating because I do the exact same thing. I'll find a podcast and I'll just start scrolling back through the feed and I'll listen to stuff from two, three years ago. And, and I've had podcasts where it's like, I'm getting hits from episodes from a year ago that I'm not promoting and they're just like taking off. And it's like, wow, like I didn't do anything for that. Yeah, exactly. It's, and it's, it's wild. And I think usually what, to me, what that says is that you recently had an episode where you just crushed it, you know, and because people hear that and then it grows. And that's when you start to notice a spike and not only in that episode, but some of your previous ones. I mean, I, I talked to one of our, our customers a week or two ago and they, they brought up that they'd, you know, they'd done, they had their biggest month in terms of downloads and streams that they had had. It wasn't just, you know, one episode, it was, they saw growth from, you know, one episode, but then also ones from like months back. And I basically told them it's honestly probably because you've been working at it over time. You get to the point where now you're, you're pretty darn good at this. And you probably just had a great episode that resonated with people. And then what happened is they loved it. They went back and listened to others. So it's, it uh, is. it's that compound interest effect, right? Yes, it's like- exactly. That's a great way to put it. It's it and it's I think it's it's like magic or miraculous. You pick your you pick your metaphor or description, but it's just like, wow, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's just it's wild to think about just the almost that evergreen aspect of it, right? Where it's it's yet I, I find myself reminding people as I'm really kind of peeling back the curtain and showing them like, hey, you have these things for for forever, essentially. It's like, it's almost like a library of content that you're going to be able to have and reuse. It's not just, you know, if this episode, you know, this week doesn't do well, it doesn't mean that it's, it's a waste. It just means that like in the future, you know, when you come back to it or once the show's a little bit more established, you can come back and reference that show for, for other pieces of content that you put out there. But then also people are always going to be able to see it. They'll be able to find it, you know? So it's the, the gift that keeps on giving, but it, you know, We've talked, we just talked about it. It takes time. Sometimes it takes time. That's fine. Yeah. That's the thing is you, you, it, it just takes some time and that consistency and you get better over time and knowing that episode 30 is going to be better than one and 60 than 30. And it's getting that mindset 
get that mindset. Do you see companies, are they taking like their podcast and really using it as sort of a cornerstone anchor for their content marketing with all of the repurposing they do? Are they using it as a sort of an addition to existing marketing? How do you see that play out? Yeah, yeah. So it's, it, I would say for some of the either startup companies or smaller teams, I would say they use it more as the kind of the cornerstone. But then we also work with people who, you know, are, have, have much larger marketing arms or have already, you know, have a, a content calendar you know, developed and a content strategy in place. And they use it to basically enhance that. So it just depends on, on kind of where they are as far as their mar market strategy goes or content strategy goes. And that's part of the conversation up front with trying to figure out, hey, you know, what are you using this for, right? But it is, a, it's the cool thing about podcasts or another cool thing. I mean, we, I've listed a bunch of them. And I know I keep coming back to that, but it's versatile, right? It, it, can be, it can be something that if you need it to be the center zone, it can be, right? And you can take that and really just build your whole strategy based off the podcast. Or you can say, hey, look, we've got all this great content. You know, we have all these like powerful resources at our disposal. Meaning like if you, you have all these SMEs internally or whoever, whatever it is, how do we kind of supercharge that, right? Uh, and podcasting can be a great way to do that as well. So it doesn't have to, to necessarily steal the whole show. It can also be something that, that really kind of, you know, gives the the fire a little bit of fuel so i would say it's it's a majority of the people that we work with end up using it as, as kind of that that cornerstone but we do work with with a handful as well who you know use it as more of a supplemental or to, to help augment their and enrich their their current strategy okay that makes sense i was just kind of curious what the split was that you saw with that uh, it, and kind of how they were handling that as we're kind of wrapping up, one more question before we wrap up, because I realized like the time flew and like, I don't think I looked at my question list. We were just having a conversation. I'm talking your ear off. I know it's good stuff. It, it, I tell you, it's so fun when connecting and having a conversation with, with somebody in podcasting who, and you, you deal with some of the same stuff and the same questions and you, you're trying to sort of get people to understand those things. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a blast when you get to talk to somebody who is also into podcasting uh, and kind of get their perspective on it. So I appreciate it. I mean, it's been fun, but it's, it's one of those things where it's like, nice, I, I can nerd out about this right now. I know, <laughs> I know. It's like, okay. And yeah, so it's, it's totally cool. Yeah. Whereas other people look at me and they're like, that, that's great. That's, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, you get, you start to get, the, oh, podcasting, that's cool. And then you get into it and it's like, you see the eyes glaze over just because they, yeah, they don't, they don't, if you're not doing it, you don't know. Um, but it is fun. Oh, it is. Any, so any last encouragement or challenges you'd like to leave with, with listeners who are maybe like, okay, this, this sounds good. You know, you've answered some of my questions. What would you like encourage them to do on next steps? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing would be to sit down and decide if, it is something, if you want to do a podcast, is it something that you can commit to on a consistent basis? That's the biggest thing. And what I mean by that is, is this something that you're able to dedicate, you know, what it, a week or, you know, two weeks out of the month or, you know, one week out of the month, depending on the actual, you know, release schedule of your, your show over the course of not just like one or two months, but are you still going to be able to do this, you know, a year from now, you know, two years from now? Because the last thing you want to do is go through all the effort of setting up a, you know, setting up a show and launching it and then just having it kind of fizzle out after two or three episodes because you simply don't have the time. Uh, and that's fine if you don't. I'm not criticizing people who, you know, get busy, but it's just uh, it's a huge bummer for them when, you know, you put in all that legwork and all that effort and for nothing. Right. So I would say that like the biggest thing is it's great. It can be an awesome, awesome tool in terms of like your marketing and sales. But at the same time, if it's something that like you simply don't have the time or you don't have, like if you don't know who's going to be the host of it, if you don't have the time to host a show consistently, then I would say that you either 
need to put the idea on hold, or maybe you identify somebody else, you know, within your organization, for example, who would be a good host that could do it consistently. That's, that's kind of, I guess the one thing that I would want to leave people with is just, if you want to do it, I definitely think you should, but if you do just, you know, be aware that, Hey, it's gonna, it's gonna take some time, you know, over the, you know, the future of the show, you're gonna have to have a consistent, you know, commitment to it. Uh, if you can do that though, it's a blast. It can be super helpful. It can, you know, the results that you can get from it are incredible. So I think that's, I think that's the best piece of advice I can give. As soon as we jump off this, I'll think of something that was, you know, much more sage, but that's what I got right now. Oh, I love it, man. I totally do the same thing. It's like, man, I wish I could have said this, but let me say what you, what you shared was excellent. And if you're listening, definitely take note and, and do some research and just kind of think on that because it, they are a valuable piece of content, a valuable resource for your business. Ben, if people want to know more about you, more about Motion, where would you like them to go? Yeah, so I'd, motionagency.io is our website. You can check out all our shows that we have on there or, you know, recorded content, which is our shows on Spotify, you know, you, or Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, wherever. Love it. So make sure you, if you're listening, check it out. I'm going to put that information in the show notes. They're doing some great stuff at Motion. And, and you'll just learn a ton from it. So Ben, this has been a blast. Thanks, uh, we Eric. could, like I said, we could, we could talk forever, but I have to keep to my calendar. I don't want to, I want to respect your time. So this has been awesome. Yeah. Loved it. Thanks, Eric. I really appreciate it. And that's a wrap for this episode of Recorded Content. This show is produced by Motion, a full service podcast agency that's all about working with B2B marketers. Starting a podcast is hard, but it doesn't have to be. Visit motionagency.io and get everything you need to launch and grow your customer's favorite show. 